Hey, this is Connor with Congruent X, and today we're going to be talking about Canvas apps. So this is going to be a basic overview of what a Canvas app is, how do I make one, what are some things I can do in them, what are the basic components of a Canvas app, like buttons and galleries. And then we'll also talk about how to actually share these apps with users in your system. So let's go ahead and dive in. To create a Canvas app, you're just gonna go to make.powerapps.com. Make sure you're in the right environment, of course. And in the Apps tab, just select New App, and you'll see Canvas. Let's give it a name. And you'll pick the format. My advice here is if your app is ever going to be played outside of your mobile phone, always do a tablet format. There's some certain things that you unlock when you create a tablet form Canvas app that you don't get in the phone format. Okay, so I don't know the uh, official name of what exactly this editor is called. We'll call it maybe the Canvas App Studio. So I like to kind of think of this as three different areas. On the left side, you have your main navigation menu, right? And this is how you're gonna see all the different components all the different galleries, labels, and buttons that are within your app. This is also where you're gonna see data sources, the pictures you're using in your app, and things like that. This top section is your kind of overall app menu. There is some overlap in what this menu and the menu in the left can do. I would say the most important area on this section is probably gonna be the settings. And finally, we have what I'll call the properties area, which is this right area, which you can collapse. Both of these areas you can collapse. The property areas is gonna kinda show you in context the properties of whatever you have selected. In this case, I have screen one selected, so we're seeing the properties of that screen. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of where things are, I'm gonna go over a couple different actions you might be taking when creating a Canvas app. First thing is gonna be data. How do we get data in and how do we get data out? Since the series is based on Dataverse, we're gonna be using Dataverse connections. So the first thing to take note here is we have two different sections. We have tables and connectors. Essentially, this is just Dataverse and literally everything else. That could be Google Sheets, it could be Excel, it could be Slack. There's hundreds of different connectors you can use with Canvas apps. For now, uh, we're just gonna use a table called accounts, which I've kind of been using in this series just to keep things cohesive. And all you do is select it and it gets added to the app. So now that we have our data, there's probably two main actions you're gonna be doing with that data. You're gonna be viewing it or you're going to be editing it, as in adding new rows or deleting rows. So the most basic way to get a view of a data set is to use what's called a gallery. So if you remember setting up views in a previous video, a gallery is really similar to that, but instead of just having data organized in rows, it's organized in little boxes where you can kind of reorganize where different labels go and show different pictures, that kind of thing. So there's two ways to add a gallery. Um, I like to use this left window. If you hit plus, you'll see vertical gallery, or you can expand layout and select a couple different types, right? There's vertical galleries, which are gonna scroll up and down, and there's horizontal galleries, which are gonna scroll left and right. You'll also notice we have blank versions of these galleries. So when you select a vertical gallery or a horizontal gallery, it's gonna go ahead and add a couple different elements for you. You can see we get a image element and two labels and also a button. If I add a blank vertical gallery, it just comes blank. And that's kind of how you can start from scratch. The second way you can add a gallery is at the top menu. If you go to insert and gallery, here you see the same options just represented in a different way. So for now, we're gonna pick a blank gallery. We're going to just click and drag and resize the gallery to our full screen here. The very first thing you're gonna do when creating a gallery is you need to tell it which data set to look at. In our case, we're just gonna be using accounts. So all we need to do is select accounts here. And you'll see in the properties window, accounts is selected as our data source. Since we're using Dataverse, we can actually use system views to filter the data in the actual call to the system. So you don't have to filter anything in the Canvas app. And so now we have our data in our gallery, but our gallery is still blank. 
That's because we need to add labels to actually visualize the data. So with the gallery, there's kind of two sections. There's the overall gallery, and then there's what we'll call an item, right? Each row of the data set. In order to add a label, or any kind of visualization, you'll need to be selected on the item, not on the gallery as a whole. There's two different ways you can make sure of that. You can see here, I have my whole gallery selected, but when I'm selected on an item, it's way smaller, and we can control the size of that. The second way is if you select this little edit gallery button, that will make sure you're selected on the individual item within a gallery. So you'll see if we add a label, it's gonna go ahead and grab a field, Sometimes that field makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. And we can kind of click and drag and resize this label wherever we want. So now I'm not gonna get very, very deep into the properties of this label, but I'm just gonna show you just enough to add different fields into your gallery. So right now, you can see when I'm selected on this label, I see that the text property is set to this item dot account name. All that means is I'm showing for this specific item, this row in the database, right? I'm showing the account name field. To change the field, just get rid of account name and we're left with this item. So all you need to do is add a period. That's what kind of helps you drill down into the options. And you'll see we're prompted with a list of all the different options we can choose. So maybe instead of account name, we wanted to show the city of this account. So let's set up a couple basic labels here. Let's go back to the name. And also you'll notice if I start typing in name, it will populate with fields that contain name to kind of suggest different things to me. Now let's add another label. You'll see it defaulted to main phone, but um, I think in our case, let's add city and state. So I'll type in city. Let's do address one city. And let's set the text alignment to the right. Let's add another label and let's grab the state. Again, let's set the alignment to right and let's put it just below the city there. Now, the last thing I'm gonna cover in galleries is how to control the size of these different sections, right? We can see that, you know, we have fourth coffee, litware, adventure works. Those are all different rows, different accounts in our database. So how do I make those different sections, those different items smaller? Because right now they're pretty big. So again, all you need to do is make sure you're selected on the item of the gallery, right? If we select the whole gallery and I try to resize it, it actually controls the entire gallery. So I'm gonna select the item of the gallery, which I said is not always the easiest thing. Usually if you just click anywhere in this first row, it will select the item. If you're having trouble though, just select the gallery in our left pane here and hit edit. Now just drag the size of the item and you'll see we get more or less records because it's making the size of each item smaller. All right, now that we have a decent view of our data, let's figure out how we can actually edit this data or add new things to the data. So to do that, we're gonna dive into the tree view a little bit. So you can see everything gets organized in kind of a parent-child fashion here right? So we have our screen. That's the whole screen that we're looking at here. And you see, if I collapse that, all of our different items go away and we can expand it to see everything in that screen. Then we have our gallery that also has some child items, right? We have the different labels that we added to our gallery. We can uh, collapse that or expand it to see those. We're going to add a new screen that we're going to navigate to to actually edit one of these records. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I typically go to insert at the top and go to new screen. And there's a couple different presets you can use here. Feel free to use the form preset. I'm just going to use blank so we can explain this from scratch. So there's kind of two main ways to edit or add or delete things from your data source. Right, you can either do that with a concept called forms, which is, I think, a little bit easier for beginning users. You can also kind of create your own forms and manually create these things if you want a little bit more flexibility in the design. For today, we're just gonna focus on the main kind of form component. So again, there's multiple places you can add this. I'm gonna go ahead and reach up here in the top because we're already selected on insert, go to forms, 
And in our case, we're gonna hit edit because the intent is for the user to edit this row. Let's expand the size of the form. And again, just like the gallery, we need to connect this to a data source. In our case, that's gonna be accounts, which is already in our app. And you'll see it kind of gives us a couple basic fields here. We can edit those fields by hitting edit fields and we can add or remove different fields on this form. So before we were looking at the account name and the city and the state. So let's go ahead and add state here. Let's click this check mark and hit add. And let's say maybe we don't want the main phone on here. We can go ahead and delete that. And just by clicking and dragging these different elements, you can reorder them on the form. You'll notice our form is blank. And that's because we haven't told the form which row in this data set to show. The easiest way to do this is to use the gallery we created earlier. If we select our form here, let's drop down all the different properties and let's select item. You'll notice it's empty. We're gonna need to tell this form which item it needs to show. And in this case, we're gonna type in gallery three and you'll see it starts to autofill for me. And I'm gonna hit dot. And this is gonna give us a list of things we can return from that gallery. In our case, we're going to use the selected record. So that's just referring to the item that the user has physically clicked on in that gallery. So we're gonna do dot selected and that's it. So by default, when a gallery has not been pressed, it's going to default to the first record as the selected item. Now, one thing to note before you start clicking on things and get confused, by default, when I click in this gallery, it's gonna start selecting the different labels, right? But if I wanna actually interact with this gallery as if I were playing the app, all I have to do is hold down the Alt button or if you're on Mac, hold down Command. And then I can actually interact with this gallery as if I was playing the app. You'll notice now I'm holding down Command in my case and I can actually scroll this gallery and I can select different records. So in this case, I'm gonna select or click on AdventureWorks. And if we go to our form, we see AdventureWorks is now selected. If we click on Litware, we see Litware. Now you are gonna have to play the app to actually type and that's super easy to do. If you just hit this little play button up in the top right, you can kind of get a glimpse of how your app is gonna perform. In this case, let's say maybe we wanna change the uh, city and state to Atlanta, Georgia, right? Just because I changed this here doesn't mean it's gonna go change the database. I have to actually tell this app, hey, go patch this row in the database with Atlanta and Georgia, right? We're gonna replace that city and state. With forms, this is actually really easy to do. All we need to do is add some sort of button for the user to press. So let's add a button here. Let's put it at the bottom of our screen here. And let's maybe change the text. Instead of button, let's change it to update. And so this is gonna kind of be our first little peek into PowerFX, which is the language that's actually used in these function areas in the properties. We'll definitely dive deeper into that into some future videos, for today, just kind of follow along with me to get an idea of it. So you'll see the first property that shows up when I select this button is the on select property. And essentially that just means on the select or on the click of this button, what do you want to happen? In our case, we want to submit this form as in edit this row. So all you're gonna do is start typing in submit form and you'll see you'll get prompted with the function called submit form. And all we have to do is tell it which form we wanna submit. Now we see form one, that's it. Let's go back to our example here. We have Dallas, Texas as the address for Litware Incorporated. Let's go ahead and change that to Atlanta, Georgia, and let's hit update. You'll see the button kind of grays out as it processes this request. And once it's done, the button becomes 
ungrade, and that lets you know it's done. So now if we go back to our gallery, you'll see Litware has actually already updated to Atlanta, Georgia. Right now, there's actually no way for the user, even if they select in the gallery, there's no way for the user to get to the second screen. So let's go ahead and add some logic that's gonna do that for us. So if we select our gallery and we go to the on select property, again, so we select our gallery, we have all our properties of the gallery. For now, we're just gonna go to on select. Right now you'll see false, meaning it's not do anything. When a user selects a item in the gallery, nothing is happening. In our case, we want to navigate to the second screen. And funny enough, that function is called navigate. So we just type in navigate. You'll see it starts to pre-fill it for me. We just need to tell it where to navigate to. In our case, it's gonna be screen two. So now if I hold alt or command and I select one of these records, we get navigation. Now we're on the second screen. Now once we're on the second screen, we probably wanna go back to the first screen after we've updated. So on this update button, we are submitting the form and then we wanna also navigate. So to do that, we just add a semicolon to say, hey, this is our next function that we wanna run. And we're gonna run navigate and we're gonna navigate to the first screen. As I kinda click these buttons, you can see I'm navigating between the different screens. Let's do one final example of what we've built here. Let's say maybe the Alpine Ski House is actually not in Missoula. Let's say it's actually in Anchorage, Alaska. We'll hit update and now we're back on our first screen. Okay, so the final piece here is gonna be saving our app and publishing it. So in Power Apps, just because you save an app doesn't mean users immediately get that update, right? There's a publishing process that actually updates the app for users. That way you can kind of work on things and then push updates, work on things and push updates. So let's just go ahead and publish. Let's say publish this version. Now the last piece of this is gonna be to share the app. Without sharing this app, you're gonna be the only person who can actually see this Canvas app. So again, I just go to file and I go to share and I can search for people in my organization. So all you do is type in the name, select them, and just hit share. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that gave you a brief overview of what a canvas is, how to create one, and maybe give you some ideas for what you could do with it. Now, I will say this is definitely just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot you can do with this. So keep an eye out on some future videos where I'll get more into depth on canvas apps. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out at congruentx.com. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.